The Caribou Gold Rush, arguably the most important event that happened to create and trigger the formation and birth of British Columbia. So let's get started. To start, what are the odds of striking a rich? One thing people dream about in BC even today is getting rich, and that is not all that different whether it is in the early 21st century or back in the 19th century. But putting it into odds are, you have 1 in 500,000 chance of being hit by lightning, um, you have a 14 million to 1 chance of winning the 649 jackpot, so actually when you're striking rich for gold, you're kind of in the middle. There. And the key understanding is how did the Caribou Gold Rush impact the development of British Columbia? That is the main objective. Now, when you're looking for gold, it starts off for padding for gold. Prospecting was a difficult, often very disappointingly long job to have. Miners would pan for gold, and once they found gold, they would stake a claim to dig a mine. And while this was also very hard work to find the location, it also was rather advantageous to maintain this was actually your territory, your spot that you had struck your rich to, because these are not exactly people who are well educated and weren't exactly known for their paperwork. At the same time, while the beginning part of the gold rush was happening, New Westminster was the first capital of British Columbia, and some of the highlights of our first provincial capital was that there was a prison, as you see in the picture. Um, the Hudson Bay Company paddle wheeler, the beaver, would routinely stop in New Westminster, and the city, such as it was, was located along the Fraser River itself. There's what the HSBC beaver paddle wheeler looked like on a supply stop. Now, the gold rush in British Columbia has its connections to the California gold rush because in 1848, gold was discovered along the Sacramento River in California. But by the mid-1850s, gold had been basically been mined out. So all the people who went to California to look for gold were now unemployed. Where would they go? And as soon as they heard about gold in British Columbia, thousands would come up from California to BC, even though the government tried to keep it quiet. Now, the Fraser River Gold Rush really began in 1857 when gold was discovered and found along the Thompson River. As it, and at the time, the governor of the colony of Vancouver Island, James Douglas, tried to keep this a secret for two reasons. One, James Douglas feared that the gold rush may disrupt the fur trade because he was also involved with the fur trade company. And second, he feared if enough Americans came to either the colony of Vancouver Island or the territory of British Columbia, that the Americans might annex the entire territory for themselves. And this was further um, added by 1858, when over 10,000 people were mainly Americans were mining and panning for gold on the Thompson or the Fraser River. Now, some of the ways also Americans got to the gold fields was the Whatcom Trail, which was an old Hudson Bay Company Fur Brigade Trail. And even though it had a name, it was an unofficial route. It was dangerous. The Americans did this to avoid paying tax. You can see the route on the map. This is where it exists today. Another route that the Americans used to get to the gold fields was called the Okanagan Trail. And unlike the Whatcom Trail, the Okanagan Trail was a lot more popular. Ball trails were former uh, routes used by the Hudson Bay Company, but the Okanagan Trail was actually explored and mapped out by Simon Fraser, the first, first person to do the overland uh, route here for the Hudson Bay Company. But you see on the map, there are a few different versions to this route that could be taken. However, at the same time, though, there was an event called the Fraser Canyon War. James Douglas did not control the sudden, could not control the sudden population increase and the sheer numbers, and because of that, it would lead to conflict. On the fall of 1858, several gold miners were killed by a group of sailors men who were revenging an attack on one of the women. The Americans retaliated by forming informal 
the militias that were formed and the miners, the gold miners, wanted to um, seek revenge uh, on this and try to complete uh, have a complete destruction of the Salish people there. In the end, there was a peaceful resolution, but the Anson worried Douglas about what could happen there, the whole frontier justice um, for it. This is one area of the Fraser Canyon War. The town of Cache Creek in the Fraser Canyon. Now the colony of BC was made a colony in 1858 by James Douglas. And after it was formed as a colony, engineers were sent to survey the region and set up the various roads and towns. It resulted though with the gold miners moving further north because they did not want to be anywhere near British authority. Now the gold rush really helped to get things started. The wagon world was a major part of that. In 1860, when gold was discovered on the Quinault River, reaching this spot was incredibly difficult as there was no roads. So James Douglas in 1862 ordered the construction of a wagon road to go from the town of Yale to Lytton to Quinault to eventually Barkerville. The wagon road would be 650 kilometers long. It would cost $750,000 to build and it was finished in 1865. And even though it began uh, at the edge of where the paddle wheel that the boat would go to in Yale, by the time the road was finished, the gold rush heyday, well, it wasn't finished, but it was already diminishing for it because gold rushes are boom and bust. But you can definitely tell the importance of it when you look on the wagon road, when you look at the various constructions for it. This is the um, Jackass Mountain Summit in the Fraser Canyon with the very first um, wagon being uh, brought up. It's just kind of interesting where that very first wagon is located. Do you actually know where the first wagon, BC wagon, is located along the Caribou Well Road? It's located in the town of 100 Mile House. Right there, I think it's outside of a, I think it's a San Man Hotel. Fort Hope, another Ford Lang, or Fort by the Hudson Bay Company, we part of the route. Yale would be the official endpoint for the boat travel and the starting point of the road up to the gold fields. But it was also a very lawless wicked little place. What was also a form of colonial power was Judge Begbie. He was given the name the Hanging Judge, and even though he was well educated, loved opera, had a lone law firm, and was well respected by quite a few, he was kind of the law and authority of the, of the entire territory. <laughs> Another person in the gold rush was Billy Barker, who founded the town Barkerville because he found he made the big strike for gold. And even though his family was uh, poorly uh, educated, his family actually came from England as they were displaced once railways had replaced the canal boats, Barker was poorly educated. He was a rich person for a time, but he gave away all of his money there, and despite all of his wealth and his so-called friends, he would die homeless on the streets in Victoria, whereas actually his only true friends could only afford to give him a simple tombstone. But the legacy of Billy Barker was the town of Barkerville, which was the main town site, the biggest of the entire gold rush. People had here a hard life though. Getting supplies was a little difficult. Everything was expensive, work was long, but it was a boom town and they were getting gold. And by the mid 1860s, over 10,000 people lived in Barkerville. Even once the railway had opened, business were thriving. There was a general store, boarding houses, post office, barbershop, drugstores, theater, even a church was there. 
Hello, Americans and Canadians. There was Chinese, African Americans, and Germans who all were living in Barkeville, pining for gold. But, like every day in BC, Barkeville also burned down. It was rebuilt, but by the 1920s, the town began to dwindle. However, it was saved in 1958 when the government of BC decided to turn it into a tourist historical site. Now you know the importance of the gold rush and how it led to the creation of British Columbia.